On this episode of Pedalbox, we're saying goodbye to a long-standing member of my fleet, Rowdy the Audi. Yep, Rowdy's done a bit of everything. He's been to the Nordschleife and he's commuted me to and from work so many times I can't even count. So sit back and enjoy the first of the Pedalbox stories of how we came to own Rowdy the Audi. Well, try not to pay too much attention to the set behind us. We've done a whole lot of work on this car that we haven't really got a whole lot of video of because most of it has been kind of boring. There's been a huge amount of wiring, combing through all this loom and getting it ready to try and get some of the electronics running. Yeah. And honestly, it's just bloody miserable. So we're not going to burden you with that video. Yeah. However, today we're giving you something else. Yeah, we've been working on this and putting some stuff together, trying to keep it entertaining. But earlier this year, I said goodbye to one of my longest standing cars in the fleet. It's actually one of the cars I've owned the longest of anything, bar possibly the Golf. In fact, the Golf probably takes the cake. But Rowdy the Audi was a 2.6 V6 convertible that me and James, who owns that Porsche 944 in Golf colors, bought about five years ago as a one year summer knock around. This will be entertaining to drive for a year and we've had it for five years, which is a little bit careless. Yeah, it never really went away, and unfortunately we never managed to feature Rowdy on the show here anyway, but that's mostly because he was pretty much perfect and never needed yeah. any attention off us. Yeah. He's been to the Nürburgring, he's been all over the place with us, and you'll probably have seen him in the background of a few shots here, but yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah, it seemed a shame to just send him off into the wilderness without giving a little bit of the background and doing a story on how he came to be in our possession, the things that we've done with him, and some of the good times that we've had. So, this episode we're taking a quick retrospective and a last run through Rowdy's history with myself and James earlier this summer, once the lockdown had lifted just enough to get something down. So this is Rowdy. This is our 1996 Audi Cabrio 2.6 V6 manual, which we've had for six years now? Yep. Six years, in which time we've tried to sell it three times. Not because buyers have backed out, we've just said we should probably sell that. Mm. So we ended Somewhat up... Somewhat half-hearted attempts, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, we've not really committed hard, but we're going to commit hard now, which is why we're making this video as the swan song of Rowdy. So we've been looking around for about a year or so in total, just idly kind of wondering about what to buy, if we should buy anything, and after a couple of glasses of whiskey, actually probably more like half a bottle between us, yeah. we ended up buying Rowdy, well we ended up finding Rowdy, should I say, um, at one LAN event that we were at, which is how I know James and how he knows me for the last decade or so now, isn't it? Yeah. So, so at the time, you your daily was? So I had a Subaru Forester STI Litchfield running about 340 brake yeah. as a nice, sensible, practical estate car daily. Good uh, choice. And then, because that wasn't really fast enough, I also had a Lotus Exige S. Yeah. Um, Which was the, also essentially your house deposit, as it turned yes, out. Yes, it, it kind of was, but it was a fast-moving house deposit. Uh, and I decided that I wanted something that I could teach myself spannering on without having to worry about breaking something expensive or important. Yeah, I'd, I'd never had a convertible at this yeah. point either, so I was totally on board with making questionable decisions like this. This was ideal. As it turned out, this this example was only about five miles from where I where I lived at the time. Yeah, if it had been further away, we probably wouldn't have bothered. We'd have continued just idly looking around and never really got anything. But because it was so close, so convenient, it was listed for £980, and eventually we got it for £900, because there's a couple of niggles that we've eventually sorted out across this. But yeah, it was... It was a really, really good buy. The engine runs sweet, so smooth, it's so quiet. So yeah, we ended up buying this and we did some service work on it and we got to wrenching, so. Yeah, so once we got him in, he was in pretty good shape, but there was some obvious things that we needed to do. Uh, we changed out all the fluids, uh, yeah. first thing. Uh, yeah, oil, brakes, coolant was first up and cam belt we did. Yeah, so, so the, we, the cam belt was a little bit interesting. Yeah, we had no locking anything for the cam belt, so we had to line everything up, keep it lined up by eye, and very stressfully change a cam belt. I'd never done a cam belt in my life at that point, so fun times. you definitely never done a cam oh, belt. No. So we were completely flying by the seat of our pants in doing this, but everything worked. He's done 8,000 miles since. Like, I think we won. No harm, oh, no foul. Yeah. So 
we did all of these bits, and then what do you do when you've got a, uh, a nice classic non-sports car? You take it to the dyno. Well, I've taken all of my cars down to Surrey Rolling Road um, yeah. to, get a, to get a feel. It's, it's a fun day out for all the family. Yeah. Um, so and I they're quite cheap. Their Saturday days are like 35 or 40 quid or yeah, something they, like that. So it's a nice day. All the car guys are down there. It's just, it's just a good day. Yeah, it's fun. Um, so we wanted to find out how it was doing. We felt like the engine was pretty strong. It was in good shape, uh, but we wanted to get a value. Now, unfortunately, when I arrived at Surrey Rolling Road, there was a Porsche GT3 RS yes. with heavy modifications that had just pulled 700 on the dyno. Yeah. Rowdy saw him coming out of the garage in front of him and weed himself. Yep. Uh, he embarrassed me. He dropped all of his coolant onto their forecourt, and it transpired that his water pump had failed on the drive over there. Catastrophic so, failure. Yeah, so we, we got an unfortunate DNF yeah. on the uh, attempt at a dyno. The impellers on these are plastic and eventually they crack, especially with limited use, they crack, they dry out and they just break apart under load. Broke on the way down, uh, overheated, <laughs> maximum failure. So we go back up onto the drive and we do thermostat, we do water pump, gaskets, everything in there, and we also do the suspension, because it's very, very wafty to drive around. It lifts very hard, and you basically surf down the road, and it's not great. And it turns out the dampers were completely shot. They couldn't even support the weight of the piston when we took them out. So you had so, nothing but springs in yeah, the front? just driving on springs. So we put new dampers in, transformed the car, and it goes really, really nicely. So we've got all that sorted. Uh, essentially, we've done stage zero service, uh, some maintenance work, all is well. What do you do when you can't dyno your car? We take them to the Nürburgring, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. So a friend of ours, Mert, hi Mert, uh, he was trying to take his um, drift car. He's got a Nissan 240 and he was trying to, or 280, I can't remember now. It's S15? It's a Sylvia. Yeah, it's a Sylvia. Um, and he wanted to take that to the ring, for one reason or another, couldn't get it ready in time, so he insured Rowdy. Borrowed him for a month, drove him around, again, did basic fluids and, and a couple other little bits and pieces, took him over, and it was incredible. Just wafting through the countryside in the Eiffel region is fantastic. It's gorgeous, especially like early summer, like about this time of year. Um, wonderful. Had him on track, didn't do any monstrously quick laps, but had the roof down. And oh, we had four fair, people in as well, which was brilliant. We got lots of attention from people waving at us with four people in the car just cruising around the ring. And to be fair, he was on nothing but the finest yes. Nankang yeah. ditch finders. Yeah, had some that, really old... That was the tyres he came with. Yeah, really old Nankangs that were on there, which after one not that enthusiastic lap did start to show some cracking. So we got some new tyres on, which made, again, all the difference. And I may have done a little bit more spirited driving once I was a bit more confident in the tyres. Bit more serious business. Hood up. Roof Hood up, up maximum streamlining on my own. And I did 9.56 and then a 9.53. Two semi-consecutive laps one morning, in the sun, quiet track, no rain. As far as I'm concerned, I never need to drive this car again. I mean, I definitely have, but I, I beat Clarkson in the Jag. I didn't beat Sabine in the Jag, because let's be realistic here. I beat Clarkson in the Jag, which is the kind of benchmark 10 minute time, and that's good enough. So eat that, Clarkson. And we cruised around, we came back, and after that, we pretty much put him to bed, and we're yeah, like, we should kind of sell. Done. And at that point, I was looking for money to, to plough into yeah. other projects. You could obviously... I have many, me many projects. ...put money into other projects. So I was the bad guy. Yeah. I pushed you to say like that you, you should really be selling him. You had so the Porsche by this point. Uh, you had the 944. Yeah, I had the 944 And this point, Which so. is the one we did the radiator on in episode 24, I think. Uh, and we've got some more stuff to do, more stuff coming up on the 944 oh, yes. soon. Um, but that needs some investment, which means Rowdy has to go, which is a bit of a shame. So this is very much Rowdy's swan song, just going out to remember exactly how good of a car this it's is. It's so good. And I mean, it is makes, so good. He makes incredible noises. He's got really good pedal feel. Yeah. The gearbox is solid. For yeah. a car this age, the gearbox yeah. is incredible. And as you say, pickup is still good. And I'm going to be really sad to get it, let it go.
Cheers to Rowdy. Cheers to Rowdy. Erklink. Erklink. It is going to be a sad day when Rowdy eventually leaves us. But really, you can't have a forever fleet. You can if you're a millionaire. Let's be realistic about this. If you're a millionaire and you have a warehouse, you can have a, for a forever fleet. Sure. However, when you have a single garage and some driveway and some dead grass from where you parked your car last time, you learn the lesson that you can't have a forever fleet. No, no. It's probably better to approach these things that you should only ever pick up a car if you really have a reason for it. Yeah. Moreover, you should only hang on to a car if you have a continued reason for it. Yeah. Yeah, so you know. as, we, as we said, with Rowdy, we feel like we've done everything that yeah. we wanted to do. So long, Rowdy. At some point, someone will buy you and it will be a sad day. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a beer and just think of the happy times of Rowdy. Thanks very much for watching. It's taking us a little bit of time to get everything edited in a mildly entertaining way that isn't me and Chris hunched over a welder and a soldering iron respectively putting all of this together. We've got a few major milestones coming up, so do stay tuned. But hopefully you've enjoyed this first episode of Pedalbox Storytime. Yeah, if you like what you've just seen, give us a shout. We've got plenty more stories from plenty more of our cars. Uh, if you like this, we can do a few more of them. You might get to hear about the time my Mark 1 Golf caught fire. We shouldn't own golfs. No, they apparently. Yeah, we just set them on fire. We can't be trusted. In the meantime, check out shop.pedalbox.show, ready for winter with beanies, hoodies, t-shirts and more. And we've got a brand new pre-order of our Fun is Better Than Good t-shirt live now. So if you want to put an order in for that, head over there and place an order and we'll get them out well before Christmas, pandemic allowing. And if you want to support us a bit more directly, you can always go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and chuck us as little as a dollar a month. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video and we'll see you next time.